Okay, we're going to try uh, a little bit of osmosis again. Hopefully the sound will be better on this one. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through osmosis in simple terms first of all uh, and then we'll talk about a little bit more detail uh, if that's useful for some people. I know some people like a little bit more um, detail on their things. Okay, osmosis is, is going to be talking about cells and cells have got stuff in them. They've got things like sugars for example, glucose um, and all the other various sugars we might come across. Glucose is the one we always talk about. Uh, they've got sugar in there and it's dissolved in, tell you what, let's use a slightly paler colour, dissolved in water. Okay. Should have perhaps used a better colour than green, shouldn't have my sugars. Tell you what, let's make them brown. Um, yep, yeah, so the sugar is dissolved in there and the cells themselves don't just sit in, flutter around in midair, they're surrounded by liquid fluid as well so we've also got water on the outside and we might as well have um, some dissolved sugars on the outside okay now it's worth just getting a, a bit of terminology correct here first of all when a substance is dissolved let's let's imagine I've zoomed in on one of these uh, sugar molecules when a substance dissolves, it gets surrounded by water. The water molecules kind of form weak little bonds to it like that. Um, so rather than it being in a, a nice kind of block like that, the water molecules will attach, they'll bond to it, and, and they release enough energy, if you like, to, to break these things off. So that's why it dissolves, that's why it disappears. It, it's got surrounded by water molecules. Okay. Now, the simple way to think of um, osmosis is wherever you've got the most dissolved stuff that's where the water will move to so if we have um, I'm not going to draw the water in this time I'm going to have a little cell there um, there are more sugars on the inside of this cell than the outside so water will tend to go in if we draw so what, let's put some more sugar in there We've got an even bigger concentration gradient, even more water will go in. All right. Now that's that's fairly straightforward. The problem comes when we start realizing that normally cells, uh, as they're surrounded by this liquid, there are also dissolved sugars in the liquid on the outside. Okay, so what happens if we've got more sugar outside of the cell than on the inside? Well, remember, water will flow to wherever there's the most dissolved substances, wherever uh, there's the most sugar in this case. So this, what will happen here is water will tend to go outwards, like that, okay? Now, this is a bit of a problem for animal cells. Um, if this is a, this kind of thing's often done with red blood cells, you'll, you'll see plenty of these videos on YouTube if you wanna have a look for them. If this was a red blood cell and the water is flowing in, the poor little red blood cell will basically burst. Okay, it's called it's called lysing. All right, that means bursting, splitting. Okay, pop. If, however, the red blood cell is losing liquid, what will happen is this outside membrane will kind of shrivel like that. That's uh, something sometimes called being crenated, which means these little indentations like that. So it crenates, it shrivels up because it's losing water to um, the surrounding. So if you put a, a, a red blood cell into very sugary liquid, it will lose water. If you put a red blood cell into a very low concentration of sugar or even pure water, it will burst. So in hospitals, when you get things like saline, if you see those drips that, that uh, patients put on there, it's not pure water, they can't do that. If you fed that straight into someone's bloodstream, you just start bursting all the blood cells. So saline, is a liquid which is actually uh, got salt in it. It's salt water basically, but the salt concentration is exactly the same as the salt concentration in your cells, because your cells contain um, salts as well as sugars. Okay. Now the one, the system you probably, um, or the, sorry, the experiment you're probably familiar with, is the one with plant cells. And plant cells are a bit different. You probably put things like potato cells or beetroot cells in. Uh, in water this time let's let's use the same two cases again so in the first one we had more dissolved sugar or it could be salt doesn't matter 
on the inside than the outside. Water will flow in and what will happen is the cell will swell but because of this outside cell wall which is it's not rigid it, it's actually a little bit flexible it'll kind of flex out a bit like blowing up a balloon inside of a, a cardboard box you can blow it up so far but then the cell wall will stop it from getting any further so in this case the cell membrane will push right up like that against the cell wall um, until it can't get any more water in okay the, the cell wall is, is preventing the cell from bursting that's what it's doing don't ever say that the cell wall is um, keeping its shape or anything like that it's preventing plant cell walls from bursting in the the second case where it was more um, it was more concentrated sugar on the outside this time let's draw it again da, 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 da. So if we had lots of we'd have plant cell and sugary water, this is where you do the experiment, you put the potato cylinders or discs into a really sugary liquid. This time uh, it loses water. The cell wall keeps the same shape. Nothing's gonna happen to that. But the inside of the, the cell will kind of shrivel a little bit like it did up here, okay? Um, so in our experiments, that one would have lost water, so it would have lost mass, which is why um, these things lose mass. A um, couple of words for us to be aware of. This um, situation, th this first situation where water is going in to the cell, we would say that the liquid on the outside is hypotonic. Hypo meaning um, less, so less concentrated than the inside, okay? If the solution is more salty or more sugar in the outside, it's called uh, hypertonic. Hyper means above or over, above the concentration, over the concentration, okay? Uh, if you get the point where it's exactly the same, so the um, amount of water going in and out of the cell is the same, because it never actually stops, it just bounces out, that's called the isotonic point. So saline, which we mentioned before, would be isotonic for your body. Now, one last quick bit on this is a bit, I suppose, a bit more technical. Um, built here a hugely uh, complex and technical model um, for osmosis. Here's our cell membrane around the outside, and I've drawn these little gaps in to show that it's um, partially permeable, meaning it will let some things through, but not others. Uh, the red here, these red discs, represent, let's say, salt molecules, and the little five pence pieces um, represent um, water. So. Inside of our cell, we've got um, some salt molecule, two, sol uh, two molecules of salt, two solute molecules, if you like. On the outside, we've got five. So the outside is hypertonic. It's more concentrated. There's more solute outside than inside, which means water will tend to move out. Okay, so it can move out these small gaps. Yes, some of it will be moving in as well, but at this, uh, overall, the movement would be out. Okay. What about our salt molecules? Because normally we'd expect from um, diffusion, we'd expect salt to be going from a, a higher to a lower concentration, but of course it can't get through the gaps. Okay, so that's why the partially permeable membrane is important. The salt molecules or the dissolved molecules, whatever they, they are, can't get through. Now, technically, it's not actually a gap. What's happening is the salt molecules, in this case, have, have got a charge, an electrical charge, and the membrane is able to stop the salt getting in because it's got the wrong uh, chemical charge on it. So it's not just this idea of sort of little holes in the membrane. If we just uh, reset it, this time we put more salt on the inside, there we go. Let's make it really salty, why not? This time we've got a high concentration of salt on the inside, so water will move in, pop, there we go. I told you this was a really good model. We're getting more and more water going in, and so the cell will start to swell up and eventually perhaps completely burst. And then we've got our osmosis.